Okay, the next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 4039 in the name of Jackie Dunbar on Global Intergenerational Week 2022. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Uh, so I would ask members that wish to speak in the debate um, to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I'd also ask those leaving the public gallery to do so as quickly and as quietly as possible. Um, but I call on Jackie Dunbar to open the debate for around seven minutes. Ms Dunbar. Thank you, President Officer. Can I first of all thank colleagues across the Chamber for the cross-party support and also thank in advance the folk taking part in the debate today. I would also like to give my thanks to Kate Samuels from Generations Working Together for the help that she has provided me. Presiding Officer, Intergenerational Week first took place in 2020 as a local campaign by St Monica's Trust. Following its success, it then grew into a national campaign in 2021 before becoming the global campaign it has become this year. The campaign is led by Generations Working Together, an intergenerational charity based in Scotland, and it has gone truly global with eight countries such as America, Spain, Australia and Sweden joining in. They have worked alongside partners from every nation in the UK, which is Lincoln Generations Northern Ireland, Beth Johnson Foundation in England and Bridging the Generations in Wales. It is understood that each country will lead on a programme of events with intergenerational interactions and social media coordination throughout the week. This will show the activities of each country participating in Global Intergenerational Week to be shown across the globe, which I hope will help inspire other countries to become involved in future years. To date, over 150 organisations have registered their support for Global Intergenerational Week, and looking through the list of organisations, I was delighted to see my own local authority, Aberdeen City Council, where Aberdeen Dawnside lies within, have registered their support, but also surprised to see that out of all our local authorities, Aberdeen City Council and Perth and Kinross Council are the only local authorities to have registered their support. Come on, local authorities, you can do better. It is through the intergenerational practice that both younger and older generations are able to come together and learn from each other. One example of practice could be with older generation within local communities helping teach the younger generations how to cook. The skill of how to cook is something which we as adults sometimes take for granted. And teaching young folk how to cook is often learned from the older generations within the families and has been passed down. I know myself that my granny's bacon was second to none and, and how to do things were passed down to her children and then to her grandchildren. And I swear I can still taste her apple crumble when I put my mind to it. <laughs> but not everyone has family nearby to pass on such skills. And it doesn't have to be just cooking. Sharing skills can help both generations, the young and the not so young. Intergenerational practice is one way in which we can help fight an increase in loneliness within our communities. Currently, it is estimated that around half a million older people go five, even sometimes six days a week without speaking or seeing anyone at all. The number of those over the age of 50 experiencing loneliness set to reach 2 million by 2025-26, 20, which is a 49% increase on the figures in 2016-17. And I'm sure we can all agree that this really does need to change. A note from the Scottish Government's strategy 2018, A Connected Scotland, that the role of the Scottish Government in reducing social isolation and loneliness is to foster the right environment and create the conditions for folk and their communities to design and deliver the solutions that best meets their needs. This shows that it is vital that if Scotland is to continue to be a country which aspires to be inclusive in all areas of life, we need to ensure that all generations within our society are communicating with one another and ensuring that no one is isolated or feels left out of the communities in which they live. And I'm pleased that the government is committed to tackling loneliness and isolation across all generations right across Scotland. 
We must not leave anybody behind. The vision of generations working together is for a Scotland which different generations are more connected and everyone can build relationships that help to create a fairer society. Generations Working Together promotes intergenerational projects because it is a charity that is dedicated to promoting intergenerational work and it trains, supports and links projects. And I note, Presiding Officer, that Generations Working Together is a national charity and is an intergenerational excellence training centre who deliver training to communities, charities and individuals, both in person and online. As I have previously mentioned, they are working in partnership with Lincoln Generations Northern Ireland, the Beth Johnson Foundation in England and Bridging the Generations in Wales to deliver the Global International Week right across each of the devolved nations and should be applauded for the work they are doing to help raise awareness of intergenerational practices and in doing so also sharing their good practice. Presiding officer, it is crucial that no one in any community across Scotland feels isolated or lonely, and it is through the fantastic work that generations working together are doing across Scotland, which will help to ensure that Scotland becomes a nation where the generations seamlessly work in collaboration together, and through the incredible work that they are doing, this will help to ensure that folk who may feel isolated or lonely are aware of the opportunities available to them within their local communities and can access such opportunities. Presiding officer, I will end by strongly encouraging all members across the chamber to encourage intergenerational practice across their constituencies and regions and raise further awareness of Global Intergenerational Week within the areas of Scotland they represent, as it is important that we have a Scotland where individuals and communities are more connected and that everyone has the opportunity to develop meaningful relationships, regardless of age, status, circumstances or identity. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms Dunbar. Another gentle reminder to those that wish to participate in the debate to press the request to speak buttons uh, as soon as possible. I call firstly Ruth Maguire, who joins us remotely, to be followed by Alexander Stewart for around four minutes. Ms Maguire. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank my colleague Jackie Dunbar for bringing this important topic to the Chamber and highlighting the excellent work of the charity Generations Working Together. Um, I think we'd all agree that the last two years have been challenging, and it's important that we recognise the isolation and loneliness presented by the pandemic um, for all generations, and also the negative impact on some opportunities for, for intergenerational working. I always enjoy hearing um, examples of the intergenerational associations which have been created across Scotland. And today I'm delighted to have the opportunity to highlight some of the inspiring work which has taken place across my constituency of Cunningham South and North Ayrshire. Prior to the outbreak of coronavirus, there were a number of special relationships developed between primary schools and older generation groups. St Mark's Primary and Early Years have visited Fennel Community Gardens, Dane Castle Primary School allied with the Burns Daycare Centre. Special recognition has to go to St Winning's Primary School in Co-Winning for their stellar efforts at community intergenerational development. St Winning's Primary School worked hard to develop a number of intergenerational opportunities with groups such as Charlie Beach Sheltered Housing, Buck Redden Care Home and St Winning's Over 60s Club. Working with Lingo Flamingo, the young people helped older residents to learn Spanish words, which were later tested playing fun games of Spanish bingo. At Christmas, the young people performed a selection of songs and carols for the St Winnings Over 60s Club and encouraged the members to get involved. What's more, as a result of the incredible benefits that, that both groups felt through the intergenerational working, Woodland View Dementia Unit, based at Ayrshire Central Hospital in Irvine, visited St Winning's Primary School for a range of activities, including a day visit, a roast beef lunch with some other members of the community, and a Christmas assembly. The day visit involved pupils in primary five to seven being assigned a Woodland View patient, where they spent the day 
their time, giving a tour of the school and having a meal with them. The older folk enjoyed sharing stories and gaining an insight into present school life, which was fun for the young people and also helped them develop essential life skills. St Winning's rich and diverse intergenerational pro projects underline the mutual benefits to both the younger and older generations and the extent to which it enhances their health and well-being. Sadly, as we all know, the pandemic resulted in some face-to-face -face interactions being paused. In the midst of adversity, the people of North Ayrshire found other ways to contact the older, sometimes isolated residents of care homes to make them smile and let them know someone was thinking of them. We saw Co-Winning's Artastic CIC's Pots of Talent project provide school children with pots and paint so they could design a colourful reminder for those alone in lockdown that they weren't forgotten. Co-op community member pioneer for Irvine and Dreghorn developed the Sunshine Through Your Letterbox campaign to help those in local care and nursing homes during self-isolation. The campaign saw hundreds of local children sending care homes some sunshine in the post, daily drawings, poems and uplifting messages. The activities coordinator at the Three Towns Care Home in Stevenson noted the residents really enjoy looking at the pictures. It definitely cheers them up and lifts their spirits. Plan to print the drawings out and put them up around the care home. The residents really enjoyed looking at them. And these simple remarks and the examples set out today speak volumes to the mutual value and happiness of intergenerational friendship and collaboration. As our life returns to more of a normality, I am happy to echo Jackie Dunbar's call to help um, inspire and reconnect people of all ages. We have so much to gain from each other, here in Scotland and around the world. Start or restart intergenerational connections. Presiding officer. Thank you very much, Ms Maguire. I now call on Alexander Stewart to be followed by Emma Harper for again around four minutes, Mr Stewart. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I would like to thank and pay tribute to Jackie Dunbar for securing uh, this member's debate this afternoon. As my party's shadow qualities and older persons, uh, I am pleased to take part uh, this afternoon. And as we already know, this year's Global Intergenerational Week runs from the 25th of April to the 1st of May. From its humble beginnings, the event has grown to international level and international status, uh, and that has taken place in a very short space of time, just over three years. I am particularly enthused that the event in Scotland for this year has been broken down by its organisations, uh, generations working together into specific daily themes. These provide an insight and opportunity to plan for the future by developing new ways of exploring and discovering the, the myriad of resources which are available across generations with one another. It is also highly encouraging to see uh, many organisations and groups such as the Forth Valley Intergenerational Network in my own region all pulling together for what is a highly important common goal. Whilst it is exceptionally relevant uh, and we encourage uh, and we, as we emerge uh, from the pandemic, uh, the development uh, to celebrate relationships between generations has never been more important. Uh, this will help to rebuild communities uh, from the young people to catch up with their, with their learning as they uh, reduce uh, and as we tackle uh, uh, and reduce ageism. Indeed, one fact that the pandemic has and is uh, resulting lockdowns was in many communities across my region and across Scotland was the increase in isolation and loneliness, and that's been mentioned already uh, in the debate. I have uh, much concerns about how that is being tackled, uh, and we need to look at ways to ensure uh, that communities and individuals uh, can come through that. There are many stereotypes uh, when we look at uh, what's been happening during uh, the lockdowns, but younger people and older people alike have difficulties in both those areas. Notwithstanding many residents having access to electronic devices uh, and access to the internet uh, and social platforms, uh, these make no substitute, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, for the face-to-face -face interaction that many individuals require. Moreover, it is widely accepted that loneliness and isolation has a similar impact on mortality as smoking around 15 cigarettes a day. 
This is just one of the reasons why the intergenerational connections should be encouraged right across our communities so that our neighbours, our friends, our colleagues are able to get together to interact and fight loneliness and isolation together. As I touched on earlier, ageism can be one of a major blight to communities. It has a, a serious consequences and detrimental effects on individual self-esteem, mental health and well-being. To this end, it is important that we consider that age is just a number and we have more in common with other generations than we think. Sadly, ageism still persists in Scotland, though uh, there are many effects that are trying to tackle it, and I welcome that. Ageism, uh, loneliness, isolation, it also impacts health, well-being, finances and the economy and its present serious consequences for individuals' human rights. Age Scotland's recent big survey provided a wider range uh, of information uh, showing that only 7% of respondents agreed that older people were represented positively, especially so within the media. Indeed, a massive 51% of over 50s said older people were not valued for their contribution to society, while 36% believed that they were made to feel a burden on society. We must tackle these, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I look forward to hearing from what the Minister may be saying on that when she comes to summing up. It is especially important that we educate and encourage at all levels to ensure that generations can interact with each other as far as humanly as possible. So, in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, uh, this is why I wholeheartedly encourage such initiatives as this and supporting uh, within the Chamber today. And I wish everyone involved in the Global Intergenerational Week all the best in their endeavours to ensure that we can capture and work together to benefit everyone in our communities, regardless of their age and responsibility. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr Stewart. I now call on Emma Harper to be followed by Paul O'Kane again for around four minutes. Please, Ms Harper. Thank you, President Officer. I congratulate my friend and colleague Jackie Dunbar on securing this debate. Um, Jackie Dunbar has certainly highlighted the global and Scottish and wider UK intergenerational work. Intergenerational practice aims to bring people together in purposeful, mutually beneficial activities which promote greater understanding and respect between generations and which contribute to building more cohesive communities. It is right that we are marking and supporting this global intergenerational week. Presiding officer, due to the change in demographics and greater mobility within families, generations are becoming increasingly isolated from each other, and both younger and older groups can become victims of stereotyping and discrimination. For example, we have all heard blanket statements like, older people can't do social media. But when generations work together, they realise these generalisations are absolutely inaccurate. Many younger adults do not have the immediate support of their family for everyday discussions, and older people may no longer have easy access to family when they may need support as they age. Both groups have commonalities which often neither side see. When children encounter new concepts through interaction with others, these concepts and ideas are incorporated into their understanding. This works between generations too. For young people, intergenerational working improves academic performance, and older adults can learn new information and technologies. In, gen in, in general, the breadth and depth of learning improves for everyone. Culture, values and traditions can also be passed on. And to hear Jackie describe her granny's bacon uh, rose is absolutely one of those examples. Each generation learns about the other and gains a better understanding of strengths, fears and weaknesses. Each generation has resources which are of value to the other and share areas of concern which aids in providing a sense of empowerment. A study by Professor Duncan Graham, University of Strathclyde, reaffirmed the benefits of intergenerational working. The study found that intergenerational working recreates the links between generations and makes it possible to promote intergenerational understanding and respect. It can contribute to the development of individual comp competencies for a more inclusive society. And fostering intergenerational dialogue encourages collaboration. Generations learn from each other. And that has been mentioned already. Intergenerational exchange significantly fosters solidarity, active citizenship and personal development and can strengthen teaching quality. The benefits are many and should absolutely be built on and supported. Presiding officer, a local example is Lorburn Housing Association. They are doing fantastic work to promote intergenerational working. 
in Stranraer at the former Garrick Hospital site. Eight one-bed and four two-bed extra care dementia-friendly homes are being built alongside a youth foyer. It is an employment hub offering supported accommodation for up to 12 young people. Youth foyers, which are recognised as international best practice, provide safe and secure housing, support and training for young people aged 16 to 25. The Stranraer development will be the first for Dumfries and Galloway and only the second foyer in Scotland. Young people living at the foyer will be either in education or training, an apprenticeship or employment and will have access to volunteering opportunities within the community. This will be a promising project and I look forward to it progressing. And I would invite the Minister to come and visit the project when her diary allows, because I am sure it will be filling up pretty quick. Another local example is Mallory House Nursery and Daycare in Dumfries, led by Kerry Little. The nursery kids have interacted with older people at Cumberland Day Centre. And they started this before the pandemic, but I understand that the nursery will restart the programme as soon as the wanes and everybody can get back together again. The feedback has been so positive and all have really enjoyed and benefited from the intergenerational experience with Mallory House and Mallory Daycare with the older people at Cumberland Day Centre. So in conclusion, I again like to thank Jackie Dunbar on securing this debate. I welcome all the work that has been done globally and locally and across the UK and I look forward to following it in the future. Thank you very much indeed, Ms Harper. I call on Paul O'Kane to be followed by Audrey Nicholl for around four minutes. Mr O'Kane. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I begin by thanking Jackie Dunbar for bringing forward this debate to the Chamber today. And as someone who can still smell my Irish granny's soda bread, uh, can I associate with her comment? I think I'm making everyone hungry for their lunch in the Chamber uh, today. Uh, I'm extremely pleased to stand in support of Global Intergenerational Week 2022, a campaign which we've heard stresses the value of uh, generations within society uh, and a campaign which highlights the benefits of learning from and supporting one another, a measure which is integral to strengthening our communities and to tackling uh, social isolation. Since the start of the pandemic, public health messaging has emphasised the importance of social distancing. Uh, but for hundreds of thousands of Scots who live alone and rely on community social support, uh, a secondary, quieter public health crisis has surfaced, and that is loneliness. Uh, we know that loneliness is a public health crisis, as it significantly increases the risk of stress, anxiety and depression, and it doubles, indeed, the risk of dementia. In fact, as we have heard from colleagues already, long-term loneliness is as damaging to our health as smoking 15 cigarettes per day. And whilst loneliness can occur at any and all stages of life, most triggers tend to congregate in later life due to factors such as retiring from work, uh, being bereaved, uh, illness and children moving away from home. During the pandemic, the effects of social isolation were often felt most acutely by our older generation, many of whom fell into high-risk brackets and as such were forced not only to isolate but to shield completely. And for the rest, as a result of COVID regulations more generally, uh, most mechanisms of social support, such as in-person community groups, were closed. Uh, I think, though, uh, in common with colleagues across the Chamber, during the lockdown periods, uh, I really saw generations coming together in a way that perhaps I had not in the past. Uh, and that could be as simple as young neighbours looking in on their older neighbours uh, to make sure that they had uh, shopping in or they had the prescription picked up. And I think there was a real willingness to go across the garden fence or the garden gate and actually to have a conversation with someone, perhaps in a way that had not happened before. There were also formal examples of this in my own West Scotland region in Renfrewshire. The Intergenerational Project and Creative Writing Programme Poetic Pathways worked with older adults living independently within sheltered housing and young people from schools to provide an outlet for both generations to exchange their feelings and experiences during the lockdown. Local schools would periodically write letters and cards, facilitating connections between both generations at a time when many were shielding and had received no, uh, little or no social interaction. And that had the effect of breaking down the stigmas that are often attached with older people and younger people, and instead created a sense of partnership between generations through which life experience could be exchanged and commonalities shared. And that project has actually moved on further, and Poetic Pathways has now created uh, an interactive poetic walk down um, the cycle route uh, in Renfrewshire, um, route, cycle, uh, route 7 cycle path, which runs from Paisley 
uh, through Johnston and, and two schools that were involved in that, Glencoats Primary in Paisley and Fordbank Primary in Johnston, are very proud of the work that they have done along with um, sheltered housing residents to put poetry onto that pathway for everyone to read. And actually, they won an award um, at the Generations Working Together Awards for their use of place and space. And I think that is something that absolutely has to be celebrated. We know, presiding officer, that um, the third sector and voluntary organisations continue to work tirelessly to combat loneliness. And I think within this chamber, we all know that we need to do more to provide sustainable funding and support for those organisations. Because undoubtedly, age discrimination and loneliness will often result from wider pressures in our society, not least, I think, within our health service. So, to conclude, uh, presiding officer, Global Intergenerational Week is about important conversations being had, about recognising uh, the value of every generation in Scotland, and taking the next steps towards continuing to reconnect our generations post COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. O'Kane. I now call on Audrey Nicholl to be followed by Maggie Chapman again around four minutes. Ms. Nicholl. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And likewise, I congratulate my friend and colleague Jackie Dunbar on bringing this debate forward today in recognition of Global Intergenerational Week. And I commend the contributions so far that have reflected just how much we can all relate to Interge Intergenerational Week. It certainly resonated with me. Inspiring individuals, groups and organisations to connect younger and older generations, especially given that tackling loneliness and isolation is an increasing policy concern for governments, makes complete sense. As articulated during the launch of this year's campaign, it offers the chance to change the narrative from it being just a nice thing to do to being something that is essential practice. But why? The improvements in older adults' mental and physical well-being and the impact on conditions such as depression, dementia and, of course, loneliness are well documented. It also improved strength, eating and sleeping better, sharing stories and, of course, tackling stigma, all significant health and well-being benefits for older people. But while it is easy to assume loneliness and isolation only impact older people, as Lee Nifton from the Mental Health Foundation Scotland reminded us, the elephant in the room is also the number of young people who struggle to form relationships at a young age. Intergenerational practice has many benefits for children and young people. Shared thinking, stronger social skills, developing empathy and kindness, and learning about local history. Like many of my own peers, I belong to the sandwich generation, caring for my parents and my own family both at the same time. Sometimes demanding, but an opportunity for a strong inter intergenerational dynamic between my son and his grandpa. It was organic and natural for my son to visit his grandpa, my father, then in residential care, and to take him for a walk to the nearby beach help set up the annual summer care home barbecue or just talk with residents in the common room about his school trip to the battlefields in France and Belgium. A wonderful opportunity to the residents to reminisce about their own lives and experiences, importantly acknowledging their own past rather than it just being a photograph on their bedside table or a memory kept but never really shared. My constituency of Aberdeen South and North Kincardine is home to some fantastic groups and organisations, all supporting intergenerational connections. My friends at the Port Lethen Benshed never fail to amaze me with their sense of brotherhood towards each other, but also to their village and beyond. And recently, they prototyped and delivered a tinkering board or a, a busy board for the local primary school to support younger people pupils tinker, learn and explore while developing their sensory practice. And I very much invite uh, the Minister to come and visit the Port Lethens Men's Shed after she has been to uh, uh, my colleague Emma Harper's uh, constituency. If you want to drop in past the old Torrey Community Centre, uh, just along from my office, uh, any Thursday morning, and you will find a fabulous group of physiotherapy students from the Robert Gordon University running a community physio drop-in, offering in particular older folks the chance to chat about their aches and pains, do some exercises, or just have a cup of tea and a blether. And at the same time, the students are developing their own clinical skills in a real-world environment, 
a living example of intergenerational practice. And at this point, I wish to acknowledge generations working together from Scotland, linking generations Northern Ireland, their Welsh partner Bridging the Generations, and the Beth Johnson Foundation in England. And I also want to acknowledge the work of the many charities, third sector and voluntary groups and organisations, all working to support intergenerational practice and supported, for many of them, by the £10 million commitment announced last year by the Scottish Government to support a five-year social isolation and loneliness plan. And this will be a pivotal part of our national response as we face the challenges from the awfulness of the pandemic. So to conclude, Presiding Officer, I wish everyone supporting and participating in Intergener Intergenerational Week well, and I look forward to hearing more about the work they will be taking forward, both in Scotland and beyond. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I'd warn the Minister that uh, Dumfries and Galloway is not really on the way to uh, Aberdeenshire, but I'm sure she'll have worked that out. Um, I now call Maggie Chapman, who will be followed by Stephanie Callan. Around, around four minutes, please. Thanks very much, Presiding Officer. And I thank Jackie Dunbar for her motion and for securing this debate today. I'm delighted to share in the welcome for Global Intergenerational Week and the appreciation of the work of those behind it. It is indeed essential for both individual and community well-being that we de develop and celebrate relationships between generations, that together we work to combat loneliness, create inclusive spaces and shared stories, build solidarity and overcome barriers to, ex ex to its expression. Intergenerational practice, care and learning are indispensable parts of this important work. But we also, I think, need to acknowledge that some of the barriers between generations are structural, constructed by decades of deliberate policy and shameful inaction. For the first three quarters of the 20th century, there was an assumption that each generation of children would have better life experiences than their parents, be better housed, better fed, better educated, would have higher paid and more rewarding jobs, would live longer and healthier, happier lives. This is no longer the case. Young people, and I don't only mean the very young, are disproportionately burdened by massive levels of student and other debt, by precarious work, including zero-hour contracts, by career pathways blocked except to the highly privileged, by insecure, unhealthy and exploitative private sector tenancies, and by overburdened and inaccessible health care, especially in relation to mental health. Just this week, LGBT Youth Scotland launched a new report showing a huge drop in the numbers of, of young people who believe Scotland is a good place in which to be LGBTI, from 81% 15 years ago to only 65% now. That is a shocking and sobering statistic, as is the finding that 69% identify transphobia as, the big as a big problem in Scotland and 81% say that media representation of LGBTI people is not accurate. Those are scandals for which their generation is not to blame. I am proud that as Scottish Greens we have recognised this deep and broad intergenerational injustice and are addressing these issues head on, and I urge others at all levels of government, parliament and councils to do the same. Much more must be done, especially by those generations who have benefited from the 20th century welfare state to repair that legacy for those who follow. Meanwhile, our younger generations, including the tiniest children, bear yet more, even heavier burdens, those of the climate and biodiversity crises. The simplest and most fundamental foundations of our everyday lives, predictable seasons, rainfall, harvests, healthy soil, pollination, and peace itself, are all diminishing as we watch and debate and are distracted and procrastinate. And the righteous and accurate anger of Greta Thunberg, Elizabeth Wanjiru Watuti and Carlos Manuel are, if they are noticed at all, met with condescension and contempt or with useless sentimentality. Because those two ways of responding to the voices of the young are in reality mirror images of one another. We either ignore what they are telling us, dismissing their experience and their analysis with cheap jibes and patronising pats on the head, or we sanctify them, taking their evidence and argument out of the realm of political action altogether. These young people, we say perhaps, they're so clever they'll fix it in the future. But it's not their job to fix it. 
and the time to act isn't in the future. In conclusion, Presiding Officer, I'd like again to welcome this initiative and wholeheartedly support the development and celebration of intergenerational relationships. But those relationships have to take place in political, institutional and structural contexts, not just in the personal and social. We need to develop a truly participatory politics that is shaped as much by the young as by the older people, and that has the honesty to name injustices and the courage to act upon them. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms Chapman. And I call final speaker in the open debate, Stephanie Callaghan, for around four minutes, please, Ms Callaghan. Thank you, President Officer, and thanks also to my colleague, Jack Eden Barr, for bringing this debate. And it's been great listening to what everybody's got to say today. I'll try and keep mine quite light, actually. Uh, Global Intergenerational Week is an opportunity to strengthen intergenerational bonds, strengthen communities, strengthen a response to major challenges in an uncertain world, and also to share knowledge and share joy. COVID provides examples of intergenerational connections that have quite literally saved lives, but also highlights the terrible toll of isolation like never before. For decades, policies and practices have segregated younger and older people, resulting in a cascade of problems from ageism to loneliness to fragmented movements for social change. Scotland must strive for a future where different generations are much more connected and working together to build relationships that help create a fairer society. The elderly can be vulnerable in our society, and we can be guilty of taking them for granted if we're honest about it. This can lead to solitude, confusion, and it can foster a general feeling of alienation within a community. But by playing and reading with children, the elderly are less likely to suffer loneliness, and our children thrive in those opportunities for one-to-one -one reading and playtime. In Sweden, it is popular to twin nurseries with care homes to boost children's literacy skills, and it also improves the health of the elderly. In France, initiatives enable students and seniors to live together, providing students with cheap accommodation in exchange for helping out. Every generation wins when age-diverse programmes help solve the unique problems older and younger people face today, creating new ways of addressing everything from homelessness to climate change. So let's forge ahead with innovative, joined-up policy thinking right here in Scotland. My colleague Jackie Dunbar was the first to mention Generations Working Together and the Connecting Scotland initiative that aims to boost confidence around digital technology. This is definitely an exciting and sensible approach to fostering an intergenerational community and one that we should support absolutely wholeheartedly. And it's not just about the digital skills, because at the heart of all these initiatives is spending more time together understanding each other better and appreciating the generations that come before and after us, their beliefs, their values, their achievements and their potential. Inspiration is at the heart of a week like this and I have seen firsthand the positive impact of intergenerational action in Ludington and Bales Hill constituency. And I want to take, take this opportunity to champion an inspirational local man that I am proud to call my friend Jim Cuthbertson. Too often, important work in the community can go unnoticed, and community leaders like Jim are typically pretty humble. Based in Whitehill in my constituency, Jim has adopted a street which is more like a full housing scheme, actually, and he visits over 60 elderly isolated residents. Jim drops off shopping and prescriptions, he goes round for a chat and a cuppa, he offers companionship, and generally just goes out his way to improve the lives of those round about him. Sometimes Jim will bring his grandson or some other young people who have shown an interest in helping, building those relationships where people young and old both benefit. Jim benefits from the joy these wee chats bring him too. He loves all the stories the time has gone by. I am sure Jim will not mind me saying, well, I hope he does not, that he could talk the hind legs off a donkey, but he is putting this to absolutely the best use possible. He is a really fantastic example of the power of everyday people coming together. In closing, I want to return briefly to the societal change challenges that we face. It is often said that older people may be less informed about climate change, and I would argue that this is because they have limited opportunities to connect with younger generations who see climate change as the greatest threat to their future. Equally, it is often said that younger people take many of today's civil and workers' rights for granted, and I would argue it is because there are not enough forums to hear from those who fought for union recognition and for social justice. With so many of our fundamental rights under attack, we must bring our generations together. Presiding officer, 
Decision making needs to be global and intergenerational because this empowers community and it empowers our society. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms Callaghan. And I call on Christina McKelvey uh, to respond to the debate for around seven minutes. Uh, Minister. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And I'm absolutely delighted to be closing uh, this debate on Global Intergenerational Week 2022, which, as we've heard, runs until the 1st of May. And I can I thank Jackie Dunbar uh, and all colleagues across the Chamber for uh, a wonderful debate today and for Jackie for bringing forward the, the, the motion. Um, I, my grateful thanks to, to, to all the members for their contributions. And I'll touch on some of them as I go along. Uh, many uh, today's uh, contributions have cited excellent examples of intergenerational projects, intergenerational projects, and I've taken a wee list of them, and I'll come to uh, in a minute. So, if I've missed anybody, please forgive me. But I think it is important that Parliament comes together to support and celebrate this global, global event organised by uh, the wonderful generations working together, a nationally recognised centre of excellence supporting the development and inter integration of intergenerational work across Scotland. Uh, this is the first year that the event has gone global with over 150 organisations from around the world who have supported it. And it's great to see generations working to together, Scotland at the forefront of intergenerational practice at the international level. Uh, presiding officer, this government is clear that intergenerational practice can promote greater understanding and respect between generations, can contribute to building more cohesive and fairer communities, and that is why we work very closely with a wide range of partners across the age equality spe spectrum, including generations working together who are a very valued member of the uh, Older People Strategic Action Forum and our Social Isolation and Loneliness Advisory Group, so recognising the contribution they have got to play there. So I echo uh, Jack Jackie Dunbar's call for our local authorities too to support intergenerational work. We all stand ready to support you and our local authorities, and hopefully you know, we might get a wee taste of Jackie Dunbar's granny's apple crumble or Paul O'Kane's granny's soda breed. That would be lovely. Um, presiding officer, in order to, to facilitate this work, we have provided £600,000 to Generations Working Together through the Equality and Human Rights Fund to support its valuable work up to 2024. We also supported Generations Working Together during COVID, providing £58,000 from the Immediate Priorities Fund and £76,000 from the Winter Fund for Faith and Care Homes Digital um, Resources and individual radios for care home residents too. So some simple things that made a huge difference. I'm also delighted that Generations Working Together are launching a toolkit tomorrow to support practitioners develop inter inter intergenerational relationships through play and stories. The toolkit is a legacy from some pilot events from our Get Into Summer uh, Play programme for 2021, where generations working together and Play Scotland were supported by Scottish Government funding to pilot intergenerational play and story projects. I heard they were absolutely wonderful. The toolkit will support the understanding of how to develop a project and build confidence in practitioners. So I hope that's a clear example for members here who said we need to learn the lessons of all the things that we do and how we develop great tools uh, and uh, that, this was particularly called for by Emma Harper and Audrey Nicholl. We already know that when generations mix together as equal partners, wonderful things can happen. And I've certainly seen that for myself, and we've seen some amazing examples today. Whether it was Ruth Maguire's Lingo Bingo or Emma Harper's foyer visit, yes, I will come to a visit in Dumfries and Galloway, Emma, or Paula Kane's writing project, fantastic, the writing pathways, Audrey Nichols, uh, um, uh, uh, Port Lethen and Menshed, yes, I'll do a visit and presiding officer, I do have a higher in geography, so I understand it will take two visits to do both of that, so thank you so much for that. And can I just pay tribute, like Stephanie Callum, Callahan, to Jim Cuthbertson, he's an absolute legend in Hamilton, and it's great to hear about his work in the chamber today. Um, President Officer, I hope that Stephanie Callaghan will also welcome that it's not just funding and supporting these wonderful examples, but looking at building intergenerational practice into our futures. And one great practical example of that is a new collaborative intergenerational housing development in Alloa. Uh, involving Ar Architecture and Design Scotland, Clack Manager Council, the Scottish Government and Kingdom Housing Association. The development will provide 60 apartments in the town centre, close to essential amenities, with key features including dementia-friendly elements and a mo mobility scooter charging points. 
Again, practical examples of how we can do that, but building that into our future there. And for older people in particular, intergenerational practice can alleviate loneliness, as we've heard much of today, encourage participation and increase mobility and happiness. And I hope that reassures um, Jackie Dunbar that we take tackling loneliness and social isolation as a key priority for this government. And Alexander Stewart raised some uh, incredibly important points around about social isolation and ageism. We're doing a lot of work in that area. The same with Connected Scotland. How will we look at what outside the box do with digital buddies? And I'm happy to speak to Ale Alexander Stewart uh, uh, in detail if he wishes uh, to do that, because uh, uh, there's no time to do it today. Uh, there's so much more to say. As part of the programme for government, we've committed to invest £10 million in projects focusing on reducing social isolation uh, and loneliness. And I hope that Paul O'Kane and Audrey Nicholl will be happy to know that the fund will open for bids later this year. And I really look forward to seeing what innovative approaches this pernicious social problem result from this substantial investment. We're very excited about it. And as Ruth Maguire reminded us, we are, of course, living in very different times from when this issue was last debated. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected us all, young and old alike. Not one person remains unaffected by the pand pandemic, and it's forced us to change our way, the way we work and the way we connect. But my goodness, how much you, we have done in, in creating those connections during the pandemic. We need to learn how to sustain uh, and, and keep th those all going. During the early months, we provided uh, funding to, to do that. I am happy to give more detail on that if members want it. Presiding Officer Maggie Chapman and Stephanie Callaghan reminded us of the historical wrongs and modern day challenges. Intergenerational good practice, which builds positive relationships and dismantles negative attitudes towards older people or younger people, has an important contribution to make in rebuilding our communities. There is so much more from the human rights work we're doing, from the Equality Human Rights Fund work that we're doing, from the disability equality strategy work that we're doing, that I could uh, bring to the debate today, but I'm quickly running out of time and everybody's probably desperate for their lunch. So, presiding officer, Global Inter Intergenerational Week provides us an opportunity to reinforce the connections we know are needed to build a stronger, fairer society. We have come a long way towards a more inclusive and equal Scotland, where everyone can play their part in shaping their communities, but there is yet more to do. And I am sure everyone in this chamber will play their part and will seek to listen and learn from the wisdom of all ages as they do so. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Minister. That concludes the debate, and I suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30 this afternoon. <laughs>